Peer-to-peer -peer and alternative funding. We have three awesome individuals that are going to tell us all about it. Um, I was at the Tech Chill conference in Riga earlier this year. Companies such as Twino doing amazing work in this area. Uh, and I think it's uh, an area that comes with a little bit of caution, um, but also comes with a great deal of optimism. Um, the three companies here are Yielders, which is a guy called Zishan, is the gentleman at the end. Chap in the middle was uh, Alex, Alec Rivkin, would that be right, Alex? Uh, and finally, at the end here from FINT is uh, Chueti. Yes? Chueti works? Excellent. It's uh, so the one thing I've got right today. Okay. Um, Zishan, are you feeling good? Are you ready? Everyone ready? Okay, Zishan. Zishan, my friend, your time starts now. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name's Zishan Opal, and I'm COO and co-founder at Yielders. I'd actually like to start off today by asking you all a few questions in relation to saving and investment opportunities in the UK, so just shout out some answers or stick up your hand. Could someone tell me what the current Bank of England base rate is? Anybody? 0.5%. Thank you. Um, so there really isn't much benefit in having a savings account or an ISA as they're producing little income. Does anyone here invest in stocks and shares? Am I right in saying that these could be quite high risk, potentially volatile, fairly unpredictable? Again, not really the safest investment opportunity. What about property investment? Does anyone here a buy to let landlord? Again, high startup costs, potential down periods, void periods on, on tenancies. So it doesn't really seem like there's an awful lot of safe investment opportunities available to everybody. Now, what if I told you there was an investment tool which was accessible to everybody, and your competitive returns gave you the ability to diversify your investment portfolio and become a buy-to-let landlord without any hassle? There was not a bank, a mortgage, or an interest rate in sight. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to present to you Yielders. Now, who are we? Yielders is the first Sharia certified fintech in the UK directly authorised by the FCA, paving the way for ethical and Islamic finance. Why exactly are we unique? So Yielders is an asset-based equity crowdfunding platform, and we are the only platform globally to offer pre-funded assets with established revenue streams. We're positioned to become a key player in an industry set to grow to around $3.6 billion, the global crowdfunding real estate market. Now, how does all of this work? So our operating model was created with the investor in mind. Our aim to provide market-beating returns whilst minimizing risk and educating a wider retail investor market. Our property sourcing team conduct extensive due diligence on all off-market opportunities that are presented to us. Only when an asset matches our target thresholds do we begin the acquisition process. Securing the asset before selling to the crowd is one of the main ways in which we differ from our competitors. Our network of high net worth individuals fund the acquisition of assets, effectively removing a layer of risk for retail investors. Lease agreements are then agreed up front and assets placed into special purpose vehicles, therefore providing an investment tool which is already income generating. Once the asset is acquired and leased via our platform, we sell these opportunities to the crowd. As you can see, the above flow highlights how we at Yielders have refined crowdfunding, effectively creating equity crowdfunding 2.0. Throughout our journey, we have identified challenges the industry was facing and set out on creating a fully integrated solution which would address some of these issues. Some of the main issues we identified were investment returns and transparency. The Yielder solution offers asset structures with predefined lease agreements, and all the returns quoted on the platform are net of fees and therefore complete transparency. Another issue we identified was closing investment rounds. So traditional real estate crowdfunding uses the power of the crowd to acquire assets, potentially leaving investors' money in escrow's accounts for up to 90 days. The Yielder solution, however, allows investors to start earning a return almost immediately, the initial risk lying with the high net worth anchor investors. And finally, investor engagement and control. At Yielders, we believe in financial inclusion and financial literacy, ensuring our platform was easy to use and allowing investors to be involved in key decisions throughout their investment journey with our online voting system. 
In line with our ethical and Sharia principles, we have ensured that yield is aligned to several sustainable development goals. We believe in financial inclusion, and by creating a lean business model, we have lowered the entry point to 100 pounds. Investors no, le no longer need to compromise on their ethical and ethical principles in order to get high returns. With a scalable and lean technology, we offer amongst the highest returns in the industry. We also promote financial literacy through interactive calculators on our platform, quoting only net figures and providing investors with complete transparency. Finally, a short demonstration on how easy it is to use our platform and invest. Securing your portion of a competitive income generating real estate opportunity is as simple as buying a book online. You're able to log on, have a look at our investment opportunities, scroll through some pictures, calculate what potential returns you might be able to get, and then it really is as simple as deciding as how much you want to invest, downloading key legal documentation, which of course you must read, and finally, accepting all terms and conditions before you're able to complete your investment. Now, from an admin perspective, to ensure our business was lean and scalable, all back office admin functions are performed with a click of a few buttons, negating the need for a large team. As you can see now, this is how a, a dividend payment process runs. So once a month, we will select what asset we are paying this dividend into, select the date range of which the, the rental term is due, enter the amount that, that is due for, for that specific month, and the, cap, the platform will, will calculate who is owed what, and it's as simple as pressing submit. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Zichan. That was very, very interesting for me, anyway, uh, presentation. We're going to now go to straight to Alex Rivkin. Good luck, Alex. Um, tell us about Asset Bar. Thank you. My name is Alex Rivkin. I'm the founder of Asset Bar. Good afternoon. Uh, we are a team of people from uh, banking, computer science, and user experience design. And we're working to build the tool, the first of its kind, integrated investment and portfolio management suite for anything related to the needs of the investor in peer-to-peer -peer and crowdfunding opportunities in equity, real estate, and so on. We're a London Business School incubator startup. Uh, we are recipients of the Deloitte Founder Awards and more recently members of the Anthemis Fellowship Program 2017. That's the end of the bragging part, and uh, let me uh, move on to the problem. And uh, this is our agenda for this event. For yesterday, we had a session on alternative financing, and it basically says that though gaining in popularity, alternative lending and crowdfunding remain largely the preserve of the early adopter. And the question is, why is that? Because if you look on the other side of the scale, you see traditional investment assets, and McKinsey Global Institute says that they're not going to yield anything more than half over the next 20 years of what they used to over the past 30 years. And that's on non-inflation-adjusted basis. So why do uh, a little bit more conservative, uh, those still curious investors, keep investing their money in this 0 to 1% uh, net yield environment rather than giving the money to the handsome returns of peer-to-peer -peer and crowd platforms? And the obvious answer is the perception of risk. And while certain part of that we cannot really address, for example, we cannot prove the resilience of the assets over time without actually the time passing. What we can do is trying to work with that perception of risk. And if you imagine that you're a new investor in the space who is just entering it and you're slightly more on the conservative side, then you would prefer to see something you're used to, something convenient, something that will make, uh, that will make it easier for you to reduce the friction of entering the market, of finding the new opportunities, uh, of making sense of a lot of information and the fragmented and sort of a noisy market. So uh, without this kind of tool, you have the, uh, the perceived reduced transparency of the asset classes and also the reduced, uh, the, the rather high perception of risk. So uh, let me show you uh, what we believe could be a solution to that. So could I please have my uh, demo on the screen? Thank you. This is the snapshot of our mobile platform, um, this slightly different experience to the web. I'll just take you through a few points of functionality. So this is Jack. This is not his real details. Uh, Jack has invested a rather substantial amount of money via Asset Bar's platform. Uh, before, he would probably be only able to manage it through a very complicated, a large, and difficult uh, Excel sheet. Now we give him a very neat and familiar asset allocation screen where he can see that, for example, 28% of his 
Uh, investment is with peer to peer loans. See a lot of interesting statistics that will be useful for his investment decisions and track performance on the aggregate or asset by asset basis. If he wants to add something to his portfolio, he can go to our market navigator, which is in essence much more than just a collage of different opportunities we're going to source from our future partner platforms. Uh, we, of course, have all sorts of uh, filtering and searching mechanisms, but the real point of this screen is to save Jack's time, is to put the most relevant opportunities in front of him at the most relevant points in time. And I'm trying to avoid any sort of buzzwords, but uh, it's probably worth mentioning that the head of my engineering team for the last 15 years has been focusing on da data mining and machine learning. Uh, in case if Jack still cannot make up his mind, we always have a set of recommendations for him based on his declared preferences, absurd behavior, and our proprietary models and the data we collect. So that's the uh, asset bar experience in the nutshell. Could I please have the presentation back? Thank you. So speaking of the segmentation, we have identified the segment that we believe we can make uh, the biggest impact on. Uh, that's mass affluent and affluent investors, let's say 1,500K plus. Uh, we believe these are the guys who understand the allocation, diversification, and have enough money to, to play with these things in our platform. Uh, we did quite a bit of research in that. Uh, coincidentally, this is the space I'm really familiar with. I used to advise uh, private bankers and financial advisors in London, Dubai, Zurich, Geneva. Uh, and I know that the uh, appetite is there. It's about making these things convenient and accessible for them. Who are we? Uh, you know me and my colleague that I've mentioned already. And with the help of my very senior advisors in marketing and cybersecurity, I'm trying my best to avoid early stage costly mistakes. Um, how can I get involved? Uh, there are basically uh, two ways. First of all, we're currently uh, very much interested in uh, seeing the platforms and experienced peer-to-peer -peer investors who would be interested in participating in our closed beta and to help us to uh, make this product even better. And last but not least, uh, today is the official start of our roadshow for uh, our seed round fundraising campaign. So if you know somebody or you're interested yourself, Please find us at the break. Thank you. Thank you, Alex. Pretty good timing today as well, by the looks of things. Uh, now, over to you, Chuetti. Um, your time starts now. Hello, everyone. My name is Chuete. I'm from Lagos, Nigeria, and I'm here to talk to you about Fint. Today, I take you through a borrower's journey. Meet Kelechi. Kelechi is a 26-year-old single male living in Lagos, Nigeria, works as an executive assistant at a corporate institution. Kelechi needed 500,000 naira, approximately 1,000 pounds, to buy a bus for two reasons. First, he needed to move around Lagos, and second, he wanted to support his income by carrying passengers. What did Kelechi do? He went through the three traditional systems in trying to access this loan. He went to his family and friends, he went to a commercial bank, and he went to a microfinance institution. There were numerous problems that came about, but the core problems were the access to credit. A commercial bank didn't find his loan economically viable because it was too small. A microfinance institution did find his loan attractive. However, they were offering rates between 60 to 84%. Now, that's very predatory, and Kelechi simply could not afford that. Family and friends wanted to help, but there was no way for them to give him the money. They simply did not have the money. So what did Kelechi do? Kelechi heard about Fint. Fint is a peer-to-peer -peer lending platform that serves as an online marketplace where borrowers can access credit at affordable rates, and investors, whether retail investors, high net worth individuals, or institutional investors can invest in those loans for returns. What did Kelechi do? Simple, Kelechi registered on the platform, applied for a loan, was credit assessed by Fint, got a risk score with which he got an attributive interest rate, and he was verified with his information and then uploaded on the platform, made visible for investors to invest in. Investors simply registered on the platform, scoured through the numerous loans based on their investment criteria and invested and earned returns. Now, why does Fint make so much sense? First of all, the ease of use of our product. 
Traditionally, the systems that are in place are usually, online, are usually offline, which makes the process extremely long. What we offer is the ability for users to go online and get a loan. That makes things quicker and reduces the bulk. Now our secret edge, our proprietary risk algorithm. We have developed an algorithm in-house that is going to be the first in Nigeria to create a unified credit score that will analyze borrower assessment. I will repeat that again. We have created a unified credit score that can analyze borrowers across the borrower spectrum. No financial institution in Nigeria does that at the moment. The system is convoluted and it is not quick. That allows us to understand the credit culture in Nigeria. What does that mean? It means that in understanding the real economy in Nigeria, we actually have access to that data. That data is extremely powerful for one reason, because it allows us to understand the credit environment, what investors are interested in, what borrowers are borrowing for, and that data is really powerful. Not only as seeing Fint as a peer-to-peer -peer lending service, but as simply a marketplace. A marketplace for what? For investable flows. So we can scale from not only a peer-to-peer -peer lending platform, but to also handling mortgages, leases, financial instruments like money market funds, and unit trusts or government T-bills. I'll throw a couple of numbers at you. Statistics that have come from Diamond Bank, one of the largest banks in Nigeria. 95% of people in Nigeria do not have access to a loan. 80% of those people do not find banks as providers of loans. Out of those 80%, 90% of them have never taken a loan before. So there is a, an untapped market of consumer and SME lending that is not being played to. On top of that, the financial institutions currently have reduced their loan portfolio size from 7.5% of their portfolio to 0.12% in the space of 12 years. Where is the credit coming from? In 2016, the consumer lending market was at $7 billion. Five million people borrowed that amount. In three to four years, the market has grown at 33% with active borrowers, and it has had a companion annual growth rate of 35.4%. The middle class, filled with 50 million Nigerians, of those 50 million, 85% of them have bank accounts and verifiable income. Of that, 88% are either in paid employment or own a business. In line with, pardon me, in line with our transparency and ease of use, we have created flat fees across board for both the borrower and the investor. And those are the fees that are stipulated. So far, we are launching this month our public beta, and we have an advisory board of seasoned professionals working the finance and technology sector. In addition, sorry, in addition, we have a team of people with an average age of 22 years to 22 and a half years, I being the CEO and the rest of my team along with other 10 other people. But we have one goal, if Fint is going to succeed, is that we create a credit environment Thank you so much. <laughs> right, time for questions as someone who's visited Lagos. Anything that makes it easier to live there. And it'd be really nice to have another African fintech story that isn't the uh, ubiquitous M-Pesa, which has probably been going on for 10 years. Um, let's mix it around a bit. Let's ask Chiwetti uh, a, a question first, please, judges. Hi, Chiwete. So uh, my question is, um, you, you meant there was on the slide um, incentive for investors. Can you talk a little bit more what they are? Okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. So the investor incentive is we are basically creating a new asset class. Um, and I'll just explain why, what the reasoning behind that is. So in Nigeria, uh, the interest rates charged to people who are looking to borrow a loan are between... 30 to 84 percent. In our market specifically, that number goes from 60 to 84 percent. Investors 
depositors in bank accounts get about, at the most, on a fixed depositor savings account, roughly about 8%. So this spread sits on a bank, right? So there's no benefit to the investor, because if you calculate for inflation, those rates, are, those rates really don't make any much sense. If you calculate for the borrower, those rates are really high. So the incentive for the investor is we've created an asset class that allows them to actually directly invest in those assets and gain the profit on those assets directly. So that's the investor incentive. And then an opportunity as well for them to diversify the portfolio that they already have. Thanks, Costa. Question number two, judges. One of these two fine gentlemen. So, so for Asset Bar, it seems like your products are primarily crowdfund, crowdfunding products, and um, that's a relatively young uh, industry and group. Um, so should anything happen with them, or same thing with peer-to-peer -peer lending, because it's, you know, it's, it hasn't been around for a while. Do, what, what other things are you looking at, potentially, that could be on this platform? And then, I don't want to throw in another curveball, but then regulation of that platform, do you foresee that? Yes, we're certainly going to be fully regulated and we're in process of discussions with the FCA on uh, talking about getting full uh, permit. That's inevitable. We, we know how we're going to go about it and the model is uh, new in, in, in the US, from the USP standpoint as a, as a business model. But from the regulatory standpoint, there are things around there that are suitable for uh, this particular solution. To your first question, uh, I think that we're probably going to see a few more situations as the stuff we have seen, for example, in the US with the peer-to-peer -peer loans last year. That's inevitable. As with any young asset class, there will be some ups and downs. Our job in that case is, first of all, to do the very deep due diligence on the platforms we're working with and uh, to do the curation and allow onto the platform only those who we trust and whose due diligence process we trust. So when something happens, we would prefer this platform not to be on our solution. However, I would imagine if I would be working in the United States two years ago, if I could get Landing Club on, it would probably be there. So there are certain things that we uh, believe are inevitable, but generally speaking, from the kind of bigger picture point of view, from the economical standpoint, from the efficiency of flow of capital throughout the economy, the whole peer-to-peer -peer and crowd investment paradigm makes so much sense that we believe that in, in the long run we will only see the upward trend. Thank you, Alex. Thank you for the question, Remy. Finally, the last question to, uh, to Yildiz, please. Two questions, uh, but I'll link them together so they're one. How does, uh, who's doing the management and leasing of the properties? And then can you talk a little bit about the split of the economic return between the upfront investors who are allowing you to buy the product and the individual investor? So if you, if you figure there's sort of asset appreciation and leasing payments, how does that split? So feels. Um, so, yeah. sorry, could you just repeat the Sure, the, who's doing the management of the physical uh, assets? So, we have got, uh, one of our co-founders has uh, about 10 to 15 years experience in property management. Um, so, he came on board. Um, we went to him, obviously, with the, the interactive solution. Um, but from a management and property perspective, uh, one of our co-founders has, has extensive experience uh, within that. Um, and in, in terms of returns, so your question was around the yield versus the capital appreciation. Um, so, yields are obviously based upon the rental agreements, which, which I explained were agreed up front. So, we have tier one tenancy agreements with social housing authorities primarily within the London and South East. So, we're able to agree these lease terms up front and therefore provide almost uh, sort of returns where, with zero void periods, um, whereby, you know, net figures are, are quoted to to investors. Um, in relation to the capital appreciation, obviously this is market dependent. Um, as I mentioned, we have got a voting system on the platform as well, so if there was a downturn in the market, um, all investors can vote against selling the asset at that particular time, but it, obviously it's all dependent on the capital appreciation uh, of the asset. Um, the property sourcing team, of course, have got extensive experience and, as I mentioned, conduct extensive due diligence on all of the opportunities that we do have. So. The sourcing of the assets is really in line with ensuring that we've got the best assets which are going to appreciate the most for our investors. Thank you, Zichan. Happy judges. Should we move on to the next stage? Okay, thumbs at the ready. Uh, countdown, vote for your favourites starts now.
Right, that's it. Thank you. Uh, just maybe a final round of applause to these three gentlemen. And thank you very much. Thanks.